Hey guys, so we're back to do another practice with me. I did the first two movements of the Kulao, which by the way, I mistakenly thought was Telamon for some reason last time. My mind was not 100% there. I will be very upfront about that, but it's here this time. We are definitely playing Kulao. We are definitely playing classical era stuff. Last week we did this movement, so this week let's do this one. Right before I started filming, I noticed something kind of weird around here. I just kind of saw it in passing and I was like, whoa, that looks kind of weird how they've written that. I think normally now we would see this written as that. And they would do the same thing for this bar right here. The way it's written right now, it's kind of weird to not see the beginning of the second beat. It's really weird to not see it written on the page. Definitely gives more of a feel of syncopation when you like have to read it this way. I'm wondering right now if there are some editions that have it written out like this instead. I think this is a lot easier to read but maybe that's just because I'm more used to it. I spent some time just kind of you know going See, like reading it like this, I'm like, whoa, because my my brain automatically wants to read these 16th notes as triplets, but they're not. I think that's way too slow. Let me just check how fast this is actually supposed to go. Of course, my video pops up. That is really freaking weird to see. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. Okay, I don't know if I can 100% sight read it at like exact speed, but let's try this. I will do a little bit of a warm up, harmonics as usual. <laughs> so that I'm not like all twisted up. And some of you were complaining that I wasn't in tune, so why don't I tune myself right now? My uh, student found a really interesting tuner online, so I'll link it in the bottom bar below so you guys can go check that out. But it's like a really simple tuner, but it, it works really nicely. Whoa, it's catching my overtones. Holy, because it caught an E from that. Yeah, we're at A equals 440. It's catching my overtones. Holy cow. Right. It is a little warm in here, so that's probably why.
catching the E below what I'm playing. That is super interesting. Okay, we're good, we're good. Maybe I'll just show you guys. Okay, how do I do this? Hey, cool. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you guys can see what's going on. The side's a little cut off, but whatever. Look, you see that? It's catching the overtone. At one point, it was catching an E3. We're still a little bit sharp on that D. The A's on my flute are a little bit flat. Oh, gosh. Okay. I have no idea when that stopped filming, but oh well. back in again. We're, we're about there. We're going to call that good. Let's do some harmonics again. attempt this now. So this is, again, Kulao, Grand Solo number one, third movement, the Allegro, Vivace. Also, my keys are extremely sticky and I cannot stand it right now. So I'm going to uh, 
deal with that. I really should buy more cigarette paper. I'm just so incredibly lazy. Yeah. All right. So let's. So it's definitely pretty warm in here if I'm already getting really sticky. Okay. Hopefully that's good enough. Proper position. Okay. It's my top key. Wrong key. Okay. Um. that thing is still recording okay the beat on the wrong part right there. Okay. Oh, this cycles back to what it's like in the beginning. So. <laughs>
totally gotten slower I completely know It's gotten incredibly dark. Now it's not dark. I need my articulation to be better because there's some parts that I did not articulate correctly. Got to keep my throat open for the top notes. But other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, I need to have more dynamics. I'm going to go back to the top. Actually, no. You know what? We're going to start from the end this time just to, you know, change things up a little bit. Let's start from right around here because that's where the theme comes back in. So what's interesting is in order to pull this off, I have to use long B flat because right here there's a B natural and there's not enough time to slide without it sounding a little bit awkward. Unless I slid from the B to the B flat initially. <laughs> Like, I guess I could do that. I could. Should I slide it? Okay, let me try it with long B flat. from this B to this B natural. I 
I'm going to have to like memorize that. Yeah, okay. As long as I memorize it, I should be fine. Now that we figured that part out. Oh, so the articulation here is interesting. inconsistencies here oh unless I'm reading this wrong so this does need to go all the way here kind of somewhat memorizing where the articulation is or else I can't keep track of it. Cool. Fix the articulation there. I think I'm going to keep going backwards. Probably at this scene naturals where our new idea is starting. Mm. How fast do I want to go? You know, we're going to make sure we can read both pages at the same time. Hmm, so what I'm thinking here is if this is going to be slurred, then this needs to be slurred because it's exactly the same thing but an octave lower. This one is handwritten in, so it's not actually the editor's true version of this. Oops, that would be my boyfriend. I think I kind of like it slurred, so I'm I'm going to do the slurred version. So that I need to do that up there. I need to memorize this part here because obviously I'm not predicting that correctly. I just need to memorize that.
making stuff up at this point. Okay. Okay, did that memorize. So If I read that in context, by the way, what I'm doing there is what I personally have termed soft memorization. So it's not like hardcore memorization where I have to recite it, but it's like I get about 90% there. I am full on memorizing it which is what you just saw me do. But uh, this is something that I noticed works for me in terms of practicing because I mentioned last week that I'm a sight-based musician. So I'm the type of musician where like, if you gave me something to read, then I can play it. But if you gave me something to listen to, and then you told me to play it back. For a long time, I could not do it at all. Eventually I got better at ear training and I figured out enough movie soundtracks to the point where I basically trained myself to do some things by ear that now I can kind of do it by ear, but I'm still much more sight-based than I am ear-based. And for sight-based people, I noticed that we actually have a kind of version in our heads of what the music is supposed to look like and how it's supposed to sound. If you see a scale, your mind kind of like fills in the blanks and kind of continues the scale. So if there's ever something that interrupts that scale or that pattern, then it throws you for a loop. But because we're so sight-based, we just kind of look at the music and override what our brain naturally wants to do with what's written on the page, which is essentially what a lot of sight reading is, right? Is you're predicting how the music is supposed to go, but based on what you actually see on the page, you have to override your predictions. So for sight-based people, we tend to do that all the time to the point that like if you have music in front of you you're just playing the music regardless of how your brain thinks it's supposed to go so it's like a constant overriding at least for me and for my site-based students i noticed that for all of us we tend to not actually really know what the music actually is if we don't have it in front of us, that's problematic when you're practicing because you're practicing to get to know the piece. But if you're constantly overriding, what essentially you're doing is you're practicing sight reading. You're not actually practicing the piece itself. So if you actually want to practice the piece itself, you have to do what I have termed soft memorization. So you kind of go 90% the way to having it be fully memorized. It seems to work for like, all of my sight-based students. My ear-based students have no problem with memorizing. So my ear-based students will actually tell me that they can't play something unless they hear it. And essentially what they're doing is they're using the music as more of a guide as to kind of generally where you're supposed to fit the music, but they're not actually like reading the music the way sight-based people do. When you do things by ear, you're essentially doing it from memory. If you're sight-based, your practicing should involve doing things by ear. And how do you do things by ear? You memorize it. Your ear is the only thing that's going to tell you if it's right or wrong if you don't have the music in front of you. If you're an ear-based person, you actually should read the music a bit more to actually see how the notes are actually organized. That I find is the actual issue for ear-based students. They hear it, they see it, and they memorize it kind of based on how they hear it 
which may not be 100% accurate with actually what's written on the page. So if you're sight-based, you need to practice with more ear-based techniques. If you are an ear-based person, you should actually practice with some more sight-based techniques. Ideally, you can be both. That's what I find makes the strongest musician. I actually have to tell myself to memorize something. And as you can see, it makes it a lot easier for parts that I keep messing up on. So instead of just keeping on messing up, I just memorize it so I force what I have in my brain to actually match what's on the page so I don't have to override continuously what I want to do when I'm reading the notes. That's what you guys are watching me do right now. So we're going to keep going backwards. We're going to start up here. No. Mm -mm. So that is one another spot that I basically need to memorize because like you can hear me like kind of like reading it and like constantly overriding what my brain wants to do. So I think my brain just wants to do but I need to stick in all those grace notes now. Yeah, and that actually helped me line up my tonguing in the correct spot too. Otherwise it sounds like I'm trilling, which is not what I want to do there. I went too far. I went too far again. Yeah, okay. No, 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 too far. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go back. I should go faster. No, no, no. Oh, whoa. Okay, calm down. Goodness, I need to memorize this part too. Okay, mm -hmm. 
I need to memorize this part. I think I know what the pattern is, but I'm feeling like the pattern in my brain is not 100% matching what's actually on the page. My brain wants to put an F right here between the E and the G. That'll make it easier for me to memorize now that I know that. So I only figured that out because I was reading it right now with the intention of memorizing it. So I catch more mistakes that way. Oh. thinking G minor going into F major G minor F major memorized now. Let's see how much of it I could do like kind of only half looking. Getting there, getting there with the memorizing. I'm getting there guys, I'm getting there. Yes, except I got the very end wrong.
I think is good enough. So if I read it now, it should be a lot easier. So there's still a little bit of overriding going on, but it's a lot easier to do now. I think if I were to like practice it again, I would probably like hardcore memorize this actually. We're going to play this part a little bit more. I think this part needs to be a little bit more lyrical than what I've been doing. etc etc so there's two voices going on here and I need to make those clearer so especially here but I need still need to figure out what's going on here <laughs> Here I think is the development of like the first voice. I feel like I don't 100% actually really know the notes, but we'll save that for another time to softcore memorize. I'm basically like softcore memorizing the hard parts. We're gonna keep going backwards, probably around here. <laughs> We've got some chords going. I know what the chords are, but apparently I don't know when they end. No, no. 
that tune. Sorry, guys. It's this E flat that I need to anticipate because I think what I want to do going down this, I want to go to a different chord. I don't actually want to go to an F sharp diminished seventh. <laughs> Now it's actually around here that I'm messing up. It's this guy. So this little passing note is tripping me up a little bit. Love that part. That part is so cute. I'm gonna start right up here. That's a B flat, by the way, guys. to make sure I don't have my B flat thumb key on. Okay guys, my camera stopped working, so now you get this. <laughs> I want to keep going though, I'm so sorry. You guys are just kind of to deal with uh, weird quality today. I'm just going to keep going where I last left off. <laughs>
Let's get this memorized. All right, here we go. sliding there so I'm gonna take that out into C major basically right now. tough this is real tough okay two bars entirely. That's amazing. Okay.
quite something to memorize. I am right about that. It does go down to G sharp. Oh my gosh. guys I'm getting there I don't know which camera to look at right now okay guys I think I have it 90% memorized so that should be good enough <laughs> Finish this up, guys. Starting from the top. Excellent. 
I don't think I need to memorize much here because like my brain is actually kind of lining up with what's going on here. But let me do it one more time. another spot that I need to memorize it a little bit. Yeah, see it's a lot easier when you have it like 90% memorized because when you read it then it's like not clashing with like anything in your brain. I am officially tired now. I've been recording for like an hour and 20 minutes. You guys really got to see me work. <laughs> Definitely I would say this movement is harder than the previous two movements simply because of all like the twists and turns um you don't necessarily expect a lot of them i hope you guys enjoyed this video even though the production value was a little bit of a fail but oh well as usual if you like this video make sure you give me a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button and that bell icon because youtube is broken to be notified of when i post next my last video is playing right over here which i will put a link to up here for you guys if you want to catch me on my social media they are listed down below i do hang out on patreon every other week so if you want to come and hang out i would love for you to join let me know what you guys are practicing but otherwise i'll see you guys next week bye